Welcome back. This is Getting the Edge, episode four, part two. Okay. Um, in our first part, we talked about how to physically get your body ready to compete for a tournament or an event on the weekend and things that you should be doing during practice. We talked about uh, the difference between working hard and training hard. So hopefully we've established that and you understand that there is a difference. They work together, but they are a little different. Um, part two, we're going to talk about how to prepare for the competition during the week, but from the mental standpoint, the psychological standpoint, things that you can do when you're not at practice that can help you prepare for your event. Okay. It's easy for the body to prepare for competition. All right. Um, we can get our workouts in during practice. We can plan additional workouts as needed to improve our cardio and our strength. That's just going to give you a little bit more of an edge. Um, the physical conditioning will definitely accentuate um, the hard training and the focus and practice. They definitely will work together in tandem. Uh, something that we, we don't really talk about uh, much is diet and nutrition. And you don't really think about it as a young wrestler, you know, because we tend to eat whatever we want. I will spend an entire episode talking about nutrition and the importance of eating right. Um, but in general, we need to make sure that we're not starving ourselves. Um, we're not dehydrating ourselves during the week, that we're eating the right types of foods that are going to give us good quality energy and make us feel good, keep us full, um, and that we're not eliminating food in, in fluids at all. That's very, very old school mentality of starving and dehydrating to make weight. And we've seen that it does not work. I, I will spend time talking about the things that I did in my career um, to make weight that really, really hurt my wrestling, okay? So be ready for a later episode talking about diet and nutrition. That's gonna help throughout the week. Another thing that we don't really talk about a lot is rest and recovery. You know, we need to make sure that when we're off the mat that we're getting good recovery, that we're not staying up late, we're not on our phones all night, we're not playing video games, that when we're done with our homework, that we're getting to, a, getting to bed at a decent hour. That's very important to get, you know, seven, eight hours of, of good quality rest. Okay, so that, that's important too. That's all going to help the physical aspect of it. Turning to the psychological aspect of preparation, um, we can start with looking at our journal. I mentioned that in previous episodes, that writing down your thoughts and, and your feelings in your journal every day is going to help with a lot of issues that we have. Plus, we can go back and we can look at our journal each day to see how we've made progress towards our, our process goals, to see if we're noticing a pattern um, in, in our feelings, especially as they relate to anxiety. Um, one of the things that, that you need to really be aware of in your journaling is, is looking at how you worked out, how your practice was. Did you work hard? Did you give 100% physical effort in everything that you did? Um, did you do anything extra at the end of practice? And also, did you train hard? And you need to be honest with yourself. That if you got a day where you just seemed like you zoned out, you know, write it down. Yeah, today I, I was all over the place. It was really difficult for me to focus. I think that this is the reason why it happened. Okay, that way we can see that we're acknowledging that, that the focus wasn't there and we can come up with some solutions for it. Um, with patterns of anxiety, you know, if you were writing down our feelings, um, especially if we're heading into a big competition, you might be a little nervous, like what's causing the anxiety. And if there's a pattern over a course of a, a day or a week or a couple of weeks where you're noticing the same feelings, we, we need to figure out a plan to address those anxieties. So talking with your coaches, your parents, your teammates, because if you don't and just let it simmer, it, it, it's going to come out in your wrestling and you're not going to have 100% uh, best effort on the mat. So make sure that, that we are addressing those anxieties. Um, that, that's important. So journaling every day, okay? 
get in the habit after you get your homework done to sit down and write about how your practice went and how you're feeling, how training's going, and all that good stuff. In addition, very similar to that, is we need to review our process and our performance goals on a daily basis, really. If you're, if you're smart, you're coming up with a couple of process goals for every practice, things that you need to work on um, in practice that you've addressed with your coaches and you're actively working on improving, okay? Have you addressed the areas that need to be fixed or are you just kind of going over them? Okay, yeah, I, I did a couple extra stand-ups at the end of practice, I'm fine. No, review those process goals. If you're truly prepared, you're going to address those every single day, those weaknesses especially. Um, if your first movement off the whistle on the bottom is brace for impact, that's not good. So we need to really actively work on beating the whistle and getting to our feet within a couple of seconds. We need to do that 20, 30 times at the end of practice when we're tired. That's a good process goal, okay? Also look at your, your performance goal for the upcoming events. What do you want to accomplish? How are you going to accomplish that? What do you need to do to attain that performance goal? Okay. Also, uh, when it comes to looking at those goals, did we learn anything from our last competition that will enhance the, the upcoming event? All right. Or the things that, that you didn't do especially well in the last time that you wrestled and have you worked to fix those? What are you looking for? Uh, in this upcoming event. And again, you know, if it's a lot of stuff that we need to work on, that can cause a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety. So we need to make sure that we're addressing the anxiety and the things that stress us out so we can kind of keep that in check, okay? So we're looking at our goals. In addition to that, there's some things that we can do to kind of prepare our mind uh, for battle. Okay, one of the things that, that I did very well, and, and I still do to an extent, is something called visualization, okay? This is when you actually close your eyes, and as you're relaxing, you're focusing in on competing, that you see yourself being successful, okay? You're mentally rehearsing the events that, that are gonna take place in your next competition, okay? And, and if you practice it enough, you can get the body to almost respond like it's, it's really getting ready to wrestle. So you can, you can have your heart rate accelerate. You can break out in a little sweat. You can have you know, the little twinges of nerves going through your body. Um, it can really help you tap into your potential by focusing on those little things, okay? And there are lots of studies out there that show that, that there's a very symbiotic effect when we are mentally and physically uh, dialed into ourselves. So when we work on visualization, it's going to in turn enhance the actual wrestling, okay? Um, to visualize, you know, again, I'm going over this really quick. There, there's a lot of stuff involved, but the best way to describe it is try to use every sense that you have and put yourself in that competitive situation, okay? When you close your eyes, really zone in on seeing everything around you. What does the gym look like? What does your opponent look like? Are there, you know, tap into the, to the sense. The, the gym is gonna smell. Wrestling mats have a certain smell to it. So if we can start to tap into that, what are you hearing? Um, are you listening to your pre-match song as, as you're warming up? What does your coach tell you? Like really play this on in your head and then when you step out on the mat, really go through what you're doing when you're wrestling. Um, visualize yourself hitting the perfect setup, hitting a foot fake, getting your, your opponent to step correctly, hitting your high crotch, and immediately getting the hips in, changing to that double. And as you land, you've got your shoulder in his gut, and we, we set up a turf and get some near fall points. So you're really rehearsing your match in your mind so you're playing every little aspect of that match out in your mind. You do that consistently, it's going to start to give you a little bit more confidence. And when you get on on the mat, you're not going to stop and think what you need to do next. It kind of, kind of becomes autopilot. So visualization is a key aspect of, of success, right? And it's not something that you're going to master in one or two times. You have to do this 
every night. Every night as you're getting ready to go to bed, maybe spend 15, 20 minutes as you're winding down. Visualize yourself getting yourself ready for, for your match and actually see yourself in your mind's eye wrestling that match. That, that's very important, okay? Um, some other things that we can do during the week, obviously we're gonna have anxieties. So we're gonna have some nerves. We're gonna be thinking about the competition, okay? So we need to find some things that are gonna help us relax. Jacobson's progressive relaxation techniques. Talked about a lot of little things in episode three to help reduce and shut down anxiety. Uh, progressive relaxation, positive self-talk, um, music, again, journaling. Finding those things that will help us calm down. So acknowledge your triggers and then find some things that are gonna help us relax. And what that's going to do is it's going to get you to acknowledge, yes, there is some anxiety, and this is how I'm coping with it. Um, positive self-talk really helps, especially when you're tired. You know, it's been a hard week. You've had a lot of things going on at school academically. You know, practice has been tough. Um, it's very easy to get negative, you know, with, with our self-talk. You know, like, oh, I just don't feel good. This tournament's going to suck. We need to short circuit that and turn that into positive self-talk. Like, yes, it's been a struggle this week. But, you know, I've really been focusing on my process goals. I've been really working on my, my finishes to my takedowns and the transition to getting a turn. I'm really focused on exploding off the whistle. Like, I can't wait to get out there and, and compete. You know, consistent, positive self-talk. And that, that's going to kind of reduce the anxiety and, and give you a, a mental boost to help prepare you. So all those things that we talked about in episode three to help reduce anxieties are gonna help. But again, we need to do them on a consistent basis. Every day, there's gotta be positive self-talk. There's gotta be you know, things that we can do to help us relax. Meditation, um, progressive relaxation, whatever you need to do, you need to do it. And for every for the individual, it, it's, it's different, okay? So those are some things that we can do during the week to get ourselves ready to compete. In the next part, we're gonna talk about what you can do at the competition to maximize the physical and the psychological. So stay tuned for that, we've got more coming up soon.